Hello and welcome. This is Rufalmonger and my friends, this is my tips and tricks guide for the grappler in DNF Duel. As always in these style of videos, we're going to cover a lot of topics. So everything will be timestamped for your convenience. So skip ahead to whatever makes sense for you. Drop a like too, if you could, that'd be excellent. Uh, and before we get into it, just a quick couple notes here. So the grappler in this game has above average health. That's good. His guard gauge is also above average, so it's harder to break him. And trust me, in this game, your guard gauge getting broken is a very real thing. So that's good. And he even does above average damage. When he touches you, he will do more, for the most part, than most of the cast can. The problem is, uh, for every one turn at bat he has, every one opportunity he has to deal damage to you, every other character in the game is going to get like three to seven opportunities, right? I do not think he is a particularly strong character. That said, he is still the grappler. He is still the guy who tosses you. He stomps around the screen all angrily. He has all sorts of armor, all that kind of stuff. He's the one character you can get this experience with. So if you're like me, regardless of the tiers, you're signed up. But anyways, you know, this is what you want. So this guy is going to give to you. And the experience he gives for grappling is actually very fun and very satisfying. It's just given the game he's in, it still means in the end he's a little bit weaker. So just a heads up on that. So as always here, we're going to cover some of the basic moveset first before we get deeper into the weeds. So now let's just start with what special moves does he have? So how DNF Duel works is there's a dedicated special button, your magic skill button. And there's effectively four versions of it. Neutral, you don't hit any directions. Back, forward, and down. So his neutral special, and all of his specials can be held, by the way, and we're going to talk about that a little bit later in the video. His neutral special is a big stomp. Now, the big stomp, the big thing here is this is basically his neutral skip button. As if you hold forward after you hit the button, he'll just go way up on the screen over most, not all, but most attacks, and then come landing down. And if it's blocked, it is negative but depending on the character, depending on spacing, it's negative to a point where it might not matter. And if you do the held version, you notice, okay, it looks a little different, right? Now this one is a proper combo starter. You can actually like get damage and stuff off of this. And this one here is also advantage on block. So if the big scary red one gets blocked, it is still your turn. You get to go first. If the green one gets blocked, eh, maybe time to chill back for a second, right? This is so, so, so important for combo structure, neutral, everything. Uh, grappler, don't play neutral so good in this game. Uh, you know, kind of like walking and blocking because his range is just about the least of all characters. It's kind of what he has to do. And he can do this just to fly over stuff and just say, nah, I want in now. So very strong, very powerful form. You will learn to love this. You will need to use this move. Now. Going to the forward special. Forward special, once again, all versions can be held here, is a big shoulder tackle. Now, the one thing here to note is it is projectile immune. There is a decent amount of projectiles in this game. Even characters that aren't like zoners still have projectiles. But as you can see there, clear as day. You shoulder, you go through stuff. And much the same here, the held version. The held version has armor, and we'll go into armor later on as well. But it doesn't trigger armor on projectiles because it's just invincible. It doesn't need to trigger armor because it just can't interact with it. Now, to note, doesn't happen frame one. Does not happen frame one. You have to be a little bit into the move. If you do it right away, if you do it like on reaction, like you're waking up into it and then try to shoulder through it, you're going to get blown up. Don't do that. But if you know they're just going to be tossing fireballs willy-nilly, that's great. Also, the held version, which is important here, the held version on counter hit causes a wall bounce. And if you happen to get that wall bounce, you actually get full combo. Like, here's just a quick basic example, right? But still, even in basic example, still almost 400 damage. So definitely to your benefit. Absolutely. It is unsafe on block, both versions. But that is point blank. If you hit it perfectly, like at the absolute edge of the move, the green version, the uncharged version, can be just slightly, like plus one, plus two, something like that. And the red version can actually be decently plus. Now, at the pushback distance, it puts you out to make it plus. You can't get anything with it because your range is really bad. But still, it's better than getting actually punished. So spacing it is a good thing. You want to do that. Your back special 
is, well, it's the command grab. It's one of the reasons you're picking this character. Now, one thing to note that's very interesting is his command grabs, both versions, the regular version and the held version, are completely throw immune. So you can try to throw him while he's doing it, and it's not going to work. So in the war of, you know, people are scared if they're going to get grabbed on, maybe they just do panic throw. This, you will always win out. That's great. So the uncharted version does 200 damage. The held version does 280. And that's significant. Like, average health is 1,000. Well, ideally, actually. Most of the cast has below average health. So basically, this is like a third of someone's life most of the time when you do this. So that's really good. Now, that said, too, the knockdowns are different. Like, uh, how quick you can get up, rather. For the heavy dunk, this matters uh, just for, like, match-end scenarios, as you can follow up with your light stomp after the fact. Timing's a little tight, but still more damage is more damage, right? Uh, and it has a large effect on his pressure game, which we'll talk about later in the video. But basically, shorter knockdown, heavier knockdown, right? That's about the long and short of it. And also keep in mind, too, that these are both true hard knockdowns. It's not like, you know, you hit him with like a sweep or something, they tech roll. Uh, a lot of what this character is on all of his grabs is you will generally end in a hard knockdown situation and you'll be in their face with advantage. And you need that. That's what this character is all about. So just keep that in mind. So that's his back special. And his final special, down special, is a counter. Uh, everyone's down and magic button is some kind of reversal. And uh, I guess I'm not happy to tell you. Grapplers is among the worst in the game, if not the worst in the game. As it's a counter, so it's not quite a get off me, right? Yeah, they have to attack into it, and if they don't, nothing happens. It automatically loses to all lows. It cannot beat a low. So if they're in a situation where, like, oh, I'm going to wake up counter or something, right? And they hit you with a low, it all lose 100 times out of 100. So it only works against basically mids and jumps. That's it. And also, most damning, unlike, you know, other reversals, they're invincible on startup, you know, whatever. This doesn't go active right away. So if you use this in like in a situation where you knock down, you wake up and spam it, you will also lose every time because this does not go active on the first possible frame. It's only later into the move does it go active. So it's like a panic button. It's worthless, basically. It only works during like certain block strings where you know what's coming up next. And that basically means you have to know their character as much as you know your own character, right? Which is ridiculous. Uh, so as a reversal goes, potentially the single worst reversal in the game. You are going to spend a lot of your time with this character blocking because that's just what you got to do. And our final magic based special move, just jump magic. It's a grab. Like, it's a grab you can hit people standing with. As you can see here, that's the held version. Here's the regular version. Always a true hard knockdown. Uh, in the case of the red version, uh, it does take quite a bit of mana, but in the case of the red version, you can actually get combo follow-ups as well. And this also leads to a lot of damage. Uh, it's a grab you do in the air that can hit someone standing. Like, that's not how that normally works in fighting games. Normally, if you have an air grab, it only hits people air to air. This game... <laughs> Grappler gets to break some of the rules, I guess. Also, has some very strong pressure on their wake up, and we'll cover that in its own section. And that's his final magic based special move. Now, let's talk notable normals. Uh, honestly, outside of his skill button moves, he doesn't got many. <laughs> uh, as we mentioned earlier in the video, his range is frankly pathetic, right? Like, the closest thing he has to any kind of range is stand medium. And trust me, uh, when you compare a character's stand mediums, he definitely falls up short, right? So, that said, the one thing I do want to mention here besides some of the skill buttons is Crouch Light. Crouch Light is a single fastest attack. Uh, it comes in, I believe, at six frames. So it's a single fast attack besides basic throw, which is five frames. So if you're in the panic situation where like, you're just like, get off me, get off me. I, like, I gotta hit something, right? This is your single fastest button over everything else so just keep that in mind and yes you can get conversions from it like so it's not completely hopeless like you can get some even respectable damage off a of light off of it right so that's good but yeah this is your single fast button keep in mind now everything to do with the skill button these are where your bread's buttered right first you have the frankensteiner so the frankensteiner is how you're going to end like 90 percent of your combos which is great 
as this is a true hard knockdown this is just back in skill by the way true hard knockdown and yeah like you are advantage in their face and they basically have to guess what you're going to do next it's great you're going to end most of your combos there and if people are like particularly jumpy like if you know they're going to jump the hitbox on it while it's not invincible or anything it's no dragon punch or anything like that it is a very large and very generous hitbox and it can rip people out of the sky pretty easily and of course well dedicated to its own section it can be held just like all magic buttons all skill buttons we'll go into that in a little bit now the other one here forward skill also very good as this move is always advantage on block no matter what so if you just do like a basic block string you're it's still your turn right so that's good that's good also because it's so plus you can actually just combo into lights itself so if you're looking to do something basic here you can just always do something like this and if you get blocked then whatever it's still your turn right and if it hits well then geez louise that's great because it's so much advantage i can just link it back into another light and get a little bit of a combo right not too much but still it's better than literally nothing right and once again if it gets blocked your turn if it gets hit combo and uh, keep in mind too it always can combo into full charge grab no matter what so that is very handy downscale is good it's combo fodder for most of the time uh, it's also an advancing armored move and we'll talk about the armor stuff in a minute and the i guess the main event let's talk about it just neutral skill is a command grab so he has like the magic grabs to take mana right but neutral skill is a grab in and of itself and also as you see here a lot more range and it's very quick the uncharged version you're not reacting to this now granted you don't get a lot of damage like most time you're gonna get something like this right so it's not even 200 but still leaves you at advantage once again we talked it's a hard knockdown your advantage in front of their face that's good and once again basically unreactable and it has better range than the full charge grab that spends your mana so that's good now here's where the real magic is the full charge version also armored and yes we're going to talk about it um but it leads to all the damage in the world this is where you get your big setup so let me show you the basic example this is the easy version that's the basic one right and that's still 450 which on the majority of the cast is over half-life so that's really good right and if you happen to hit like just perfectly you can get even bigger combos so now that's over 500 so even on normal health characters that's over half-life right uh for situations like that with the stomp if you only hit with one hit it actually does more damage in the end and if you hit that high up then you can go for a full charge uh, down skill just to relaunch and then you go for an air grab this that and the other right so this is really really good you land two of these in a match you win like straight up against any character in the game for the most part anyways except for maybe like crusader if you land two of these in a match you won so that is how strong the full charge version is. And once again, it's armored. Once again, it's advancing, covers a lot of the screen. And there's some other stuff we'll talk about later in the video. But yeah, when it comes to notable normals, this is a notable normal. And finally, the wheel kick. So uh, even though it's a normal, the held skills a grab, right? So for a basic strike, this is absolutely your best move, like by a mile. If it gets blocked, you're super plus. It trades very well. Like even if you hit the enemy and they hit you, they will still get bounced. You most of the time can recover in time to get something real quick. And if it just hits, then like you're going to get a good chunk of damage in. You're going to get a pretty good chunk of damage in, right? And that's, you know, not even like difficult. All you had to be is just not very far away. Like you just had to be not far away. If you hit like at a weird angle, at the very least, you can always get a stomp and do stomp follow ups as well. So use and abuse. Like, yeah, if you get too obvious, you're going to get anti aired out. Or like, whatever. The damage potential off this specific jump in is wildly in your favor. Basically, let's, let's put it this way if you do this three times, right? And every two out of three times, they stop you dead. But every third time you get a hit, you're still ahead of them. You're still winning at that point. So if you can get like even a 30% success rate on this and lose out all the other times, you're still winning. So definitely go for it a lot. It's amazing. 
Okay, so we've alluded to it enough here. Let's talk about charge moves and armor. So all of his magic-based moves and all of his skill-based moves all can be held. They all basically are modular. They have two versions. The quick version, which isn't as good. The held version, which is better in its own way. Now, here's one of the big things in case you're fighting grappling and you don't know what's what. If you're up against a magic move, the green version of the move is always the unheld, like uncharged version. The red version is always the charged version. So it's a nice visual tell in that way. If you see red, it was charged. If you see green, it was not charged. Now for skills, skills are a little different. If you see blue on a skill, that means it wasn't charged. If you see gold, it means it was charged. Now I don't know why they couldn't just unify the two. Because that would make more sense to me, honestly, but whatever. So there's two different color schemes for the two different buttons. And one color means it's charged, one means it's not. And once again, they all do different things. Like the charge shoulder, and you obviously they do more damage too, right? The charge shoulder, it has the ability to counter hit into wall bounces, but both versions still projectile invincible. Heavy stomp here, the charge stomp, uh, is advantage on block versus negative on block. Also leads to full combos, also very necessary for most of your combos. Uh, for the grab, more damage, all that kind of stuff. Skill, we talked about it in the Notable Normal section, gives you the big uh, combos, right? Uncharged skill, still very respectable range. Very good range. Uh, not as much in the damage department, but it will absolutely catch people sleeping, a thousand percent. Like this is what make, you, you need this just to make people scared, right? Because the more they start jumping, like at the very least, okay, now I don't gotta deal with your crap just as much. Because in the air, it's honestly easier to handle people because a lot of times when you're just move, both moving back and forth on the ground, you're kind of losing. That's just how it is. But yeah, quick moves, quick charge moves, longer but better. Okay, easy enough, right? I don't want to belabor that point too much. Now, to talk about armor. He has three moves specifically that are armored. Charge, neutral skill, down and skill, the kick, and also forward and magic, the shoulder charge. All three... All three of these moves have armor, and specifically, all three of these moves have multiple hits of armor, uh, specifically three. So, like, if people are mashing on you, don't matter. You will just crush through it and grab them or spike them or, like, it doesn't really matter which move you're going for, but you will just smoke it. You have multiple hits of armor. The weakness here, and it's a pretty big one, is they all, just like that counter we talked about earlier in the video, they all universally lose to low attacks. No matter what. It could be the biggest, most like screen sweeping low in the world. It can be like just basic light. Doesn't matter. Automatically loses the lows. So if you're looking to bypass neutral, and like, you know, I'm gonna do full charge grab, I'm gonna do full charge shoulder, just like I don't want to deal with stuff. If the enemy knows this, all they gotta do is just toss out a low every now and then, and they will crush your attempt. So it is very strong. Stronger yet, because there's more stuff to talk about later in the video, but it is very strong, but it has a comically laughable weakness. Just any basic low, you're gonna get got. And the thing is too, once again, his buttons aren't the best, right? And half the cast, are they're down medium, will go like half the screen. So, just in the context of basic neutral, they can always just prevent you from doing it. Then again, this is where neutral skips come handy, right? Like we talked about Uncharged Stomp earlier in the video. This is where you want to use this kind of stuff. The more they're focusing on just poking you out with lows, the less they're blocking that, the less you're just blocking the big wheel kicks, which will lead to so much damage. So if you make them aware enough to keep focusing on that aspect of the game, you can start getting away with gimmicks on other aspects of the game. But yeah, so that's the basics of charge and armor. Okay, now piggybacking off the last section here, talking about charge and armor, all that kind of stuff. There's actually a just frame version of charge, a perfect timing version of charge, if you will. All the charge moves, uh, and this is most important for his skills specifically, uh, if you let go just before the full charge version would come out, you can still get the full charge version at a faster, well, a faster like frame, basically. So, give you an example here. Stand medium kick. Stand medium kick does not combo into full charge launcher. It just doesn't. Unless it's a counter hit. On a counter hit, it does. But, 
If you let go of the full charge version at the exact right time, you'll get the just frame perfect version of it. And then all of a sudden it does become a natural combo. Like right there. There you go. Two hit combo, right? If I hold it, I'll never get it. Never in a million years. But if I hold it just the right amount, and it's tricky, you have to like kind of need to know when to let go. And even when you do learn when to let go, I'm not getting it. You know, I'm going to leave this part in. I'm going to leave this part in. There we go. So that's even though I know the timing, right? I still botched it quite a few times in a row. So this is just to impart upon you how strict the timing can be because it is strict. Uh, Grappler, as of the time of me making this video, also has an infinite with the uh, perfect charge, just frame version of this, uh, specifically with his back and skill. Now, it's basically impossible to get the actual infinite. You, If you're very good, you might be able to get two or three reps and it'll do a lot of damage. But from full to death is almost never going to happen, to be realistic. All you need to do is basically like land a hit, get the stomps in, get your red stomp and then go for the semi-charged version of the back skill. So you get the proper held version of the move, but with faster timing. And it is a legitimate one frame link. So if you want to get the actual infinite, you have to do this multiple times in a row. So it's one frame link after one frame link after one frame link after one frame link. And considering, you know, it's not like Street Fighter 4 one frame links where you have plinking, you have a rhythm you can build with the buttons to help build like mnemonic memory of it, all that kind of stuff. It's just, you have to do a one frame link on demand with no sense of real timing. So don't worry about that. But for certain things, like once again here, uh, the semi-charged version of uh, down skill kick, that is worth learning. Uh, just because the damage is good, as this is your best poke. Like, I know that sounds stupid. You said on any other character, right? This is your best poke, you'd laugh. Because in a game like DNF Duel, most people are fighting from this far away with buttons, right? But yeah, so off a normal button, no counter hit, that kind of stuff. You can get a decent reward from it, so that part is uh, valuable enough to learn. But in the end, I'm just telling you this just so you know, I don't consider this one of the bigger parts of his game plan. Honestly, you can kind of forego most of this and still have a plenty fine grappler. This is just so you know. Okay, so let's just talk grappling 101, right? One of the main things you're looking to do with this character in this game is to land that grab. And then once you got that grab, you want to land another grab, and another grab, and another grab. You want to keep grabbing them over and over, right? It's a good feeling. So, how do we do that? What's some of the building blocks? Hey. So we're gonna talk step number one, right? The most important building block of any fighting game, the gimmicks. So let's talk jab. So sand jab, crouch jab, doesn't really matter which one. And if you go immediately into his uh, held version of his grab, it will work on hit or on block. So it's one of those deals there where you're trying to discourage the enemy from jumping, all that kind of stuff. So if you run forward and you make him block, like, okay, he's committing to an attack string, right? And then you go, nah, actually, I was uh, committing to a grab. So it's a quick little tick grab gimmick, sure, but it works. Now, it has to be the charge version right there. The green light uncharged version, if they block, like they're in block sun, you cannot throw someone while they're in block sun. It's one of the rules of the game, right? But if you semi-charge it, or uh, do the whole version, like the whole charge version, then it'll work. But the full regular uncharged version doesn't work. So FYI, other gimmicks come in place of like say uh, the forward scale, right? The plus on block move. You will train people over the point of course of games to like, okay, do this, it's my turn, right? And of course, naturally from there, you can threaten a grab or another strike, that part's easy, but there's a small gimmick in here uh, in that if you cancel out the first hit, into a grab, well, totally works. So once you've just built enough, like, oh yeah, yeah, I see this move, I, I gotta wait, it's my, gotta wait it out, right? That's exactly when you can be like, nah, I'm gonna gimmick you for a quick throw. So that's just a gimmick, I know, but gimmicks are important. This is how you beat people that are better than you, basically. And much the same, like you can do full charge, grab and mailbox ring. Don't, I don't recommend you do this too often. But it's just an option available to you, just to sneak one out every now and then. Now, proper grappling. Let's talk about it here. It is your goal to establish anytime you're neutral and you have slight advantage, you can threaten the grab. Be it the magic grab, be it the uncharged version of the grab. Uh, not so much the full charge version. You want to use that for other reasons because uh, it is slow and reactable, right? And we'll go over a couple of those other reasons. But yeah, that's basically long and short of it. Anytime I'm kind of close and I'm kind of you know threatening you, either I get this 
which leaves me at advantage. And from there, you just want to do basically another mini dash into a jab or just something to lock them down. Or you do a quick grab, which most of the time you're just going to do something like this into Frankensteiner, which lets you run forward and also leaves you advantage in their face, which point threaten more grabs, threaten more strike grabs, that kind of stuff. The general mix is, as with most grapplers and most fighting games, once I'm in your face, am I going to attack you or am I going to grab you? If you're passive, you get grabbed. If you're active and try to get out of the grab, then you get attacked. That's about the long and short of it. Common situations you will find yourself in are exactly these. Stuff like, okay, I just did a basic block string. If I hit, I go for a combo, sure. But if not, I end with my forward skill and I'm slightly advantaged here on block. And you're slightly advantaged enough that you can just like micro dash and do another quick button. You want to do crouch jab generally as it is your fastest button. And uh, a lot of characters in the game, except for like speed demons here, like the striker, uh, in that situation, they can't really do too much other than go for a reversal. You can not necessarily infinitely loop people because you will eventually push them out. But say a common situation like this here. You can get a couple reps in and eventually they're either going to start trying to press the buttons back, at which point then the charge grab becomes an option because you can armor through it or just go for a counter hit and just see where that leads you, right? That's basic example one. Basic example two, wheel kick. Wheel kick is a very advantage on block. But it's not advantage enough that you won't, if you just go for like a full charge grab right away, you won't connect, right? So if the wheel kick hits awesome, right? You're gonna do so much damage. But if it gets blocked and it will get blocked most of the time, you're still in a position here where you can just like, once again, just kind of dash forward and impose your will or just do whatever. Like it leaves the enemy open to that same strike throw kind of scenario. Much the same here. If you go for full charge stomp, you're plus. And you're plus enough that, okay, if I go for a grab, I'll still hit you, right? But if I hit a button and you hit a button, I'll beat out your mash. So it's another scenario where you want to go for that strike throw mix. Your game plan is to create as many of these scenarios as possible. And every time you get the knockdown, be it by the grab, be it by a combo into Frankenstein or doesn't really matter. Every time you do that, you basically reset your position, your advantage in their face. You can just dash forward, hit a button, and you'll always win unless they do something invincible. And... You're basically trying to repeat that as many times over and over and over again. Quick note on anti-airs. Your best anti-air might not be what you think it is. So uh, let's use striker example. Striker dive kicking, right? Probably going to happen three to four hundred times a match when you're fighting a striker. And your buttons aren't so good. Like, if you do a hard call out, you can do the counter. But, you know... That's a hard call out, right? And if it gets count, like if you don't get it, you're probably in for a world of pain. But here's what's actually interesting. One of your best options against airborne moves is your armor. So if you uh, catch the enemy here and you're just going for this, that, and the other, like you can armor through a lot of their stuff. Keep in mind, you have multiple hits of armor. Now, some moves are better than others. Like uh, the launcher. The launcher is good to a degree, but... It can also go under people, that kind of stuff. Like, there's some issues. So let's put it that way, right? Shoulder charge also is decent. Uh, especially if you catch them midair and get the counter hit, then you're getting a lot of damage, right? But it, the armor takes a while to get going. And if they just empty jump, they can block and then you're dead. But here's one of the more interesting options here. And that's, you see them in the air? Just go for full charge throw. Now, keep in mind here, this bot. Uh, I have this bot set to jump as fast as possible after the dive kick. They're just doing dive kick into a light and then jump, right? And when you do this, the enemy does not have time to jump out. As long as you time it correctly, if you see him in the air and you just go for it right away, it's guaranteed. It is guaranteed. The only time it is not guaranteed is if you wait way too long. That point, if they immediately frame one jump, they can get out. If they do anything other than frame one jump after the attack, then they'll still lose, right? So it's still like if you do sloppy timing, like, it can be defeated, but most of the time it still won't be. And in situations, oh, you're in the air? Gotcha. And keep in mind, this is like half health or more on most characters, right? So every time they jump, you see them in the air, it's not a bad idea to go for the grab. Now, don't always go for the grab, right? You can mix it up with uh, the stomp. Depending on the character, maybe the shoulder charge is the right answer, especially for characters with very long-range annoying buttons that you just can't hit with uh, the launcher or the grab that point yeah if you catch him just jumping over and over shoulder is the answer and of course big damage too right 
But yeah, so the armor moves are actually just some of your best anti-air options because like your basic buttons are, they're crap. They're not going to be anti-airing much. And counter can work, but it has its own risk because if they just empty jump and go for a counter, then they're going to blow you up. Versus if they just empty jump and you hit him with the launcher, you still hit him with the launcher, right? So keep that in mind. Your armored options are actually some of your better anti-airs. Now to talk the basics of Oki, pressure when the enemy is knocked down, right? You knock them down, they're getting up, you're at advantage, right? What to do then? And we already talked about the absolute basic thing of just, okay, knock down, run, like run forward, hit a button, right? That part's easy enough, but like what's guaranteed? Well, quite a few things. So let's talk about a couple examples. So we well, got the bot here set up and the bot's gonna mash reversal as soon as they get up. And on the hitman, fair enough. Cause that's usually what's gonna happen, right? So now that we know, like whatever we do is not guaranteed. So in that scenario here, like I knock you down, I run forward, try to hit you, I'm gonna get blown up, right? So what are situations where I can hit you, but I'm still safe if you mash reversal? I'll do the fun one right away. How about that? So if I know you're gonna mash reversal, well, here's the fun bit here. So off a regular green reversal, oh, you're gonna mash reversal? Nice, idiot. <laughs> so charge skill and all armored moves, uh, but charge skill especially because it just, well, leads to the most damage, really. Uh, it will totally blow you up. So if I know you're gonna mash reversal on your wake up, I can literally just go for the armored grab and grab you out of it. Uh, by the time your invincibility frames run out, I've still armored through your hits, and then my grab will go active. And what about moves that have more than just the three hits, right, that are armor-breaking moves? Like Berserker, six hits, so that definitely breaks armor. But even though it does six hits, I still grab you out of it. So the thing is, basically, uh, every time I armor a move, it creates, I don't know, I guess you could say like a little time dilation effect. So regardless of the fact that it has enough hits to completely blow up my reversal, I'm still going to armor through it and beat you. So this basically beats almost every reversal in the game. The one notable example is the striker because one, it does four hits. So it is armor breaker. And two, very early into the move, she actually leaves the ground and you can't throw someone who's in the air. Right? So in that scenario, this won't work. Now, this is like a hard call out, basically. It's not something you always want to go for, because if you think they're going to reverse, like you could just honestly as easily just block, right? Oh, okay, there we go. And now I get my guaranteed, as we talked about earlier in the video, how on counter hit, uh, stand kick goes into charge version of the launcher, right? So I can get that combo guaranteed. Now for some of the knockdowns, it's going to be just, you know, okay, am I going to, walk and block the reversal or maybe just dash forward and hit jab there's not necessarily like safe jump setups the green version is not going to give safe jump setups you're not going to get uh safe jump setups off the frankensteiner really like you will be advantaged for sure and that's great uh but you still kind of got to guess now situations where you don't got to guess is stuff like the charge version of your command grab so that guy has more knockdown. Their enemy is down on the ground longer. And here we can create safe jump setups. So right there, you saw what I did? I did my grab, I whiffed the jab, and the, the jump medium kick, right? And now he obviously was invincible, but I had time to block. Now, same situation, but he doesn't match the reversal. Oh, he just gets hit, right? As you can see. He just gets hit. So once again here, whiff a jab, jump, medium kick. And we turn our reversal back on. Same scenario. Whiff a jab, jump, medium kick, and we have time to block. So if he's there to be hit at all and not invincible, he gets hit. If he is invincible, we go clear through him. We have time to block. That's the essence of a safe jump setup. And that is provided to us when we do the charge version of the grab because it has just that much more uh, hit stun to give us. Like the enemy's just on the ground for that much longer. So that is great benefit to the grappler. Now that's the basic scenario, right? So you want to remove the risk of the reversal. Now against characters that don't have the same options, uh, be it like the grappler himself because he has counter lost warrior uh, The crusader because his is not invincible. It's armored, but it's not invincible We can start getting sassier options 
So it's mostly the same, but we're going to whiff a sand medium kick instead for timing. Just because the timing is very slightly different. But other than just doing a medium kick instead of a crouch jab, it's the same thing. So heavy grab, whiff a medium kick, and then jump forward. And would you look at that? We grabbed him. Now, once again here, Crusader, his reversal is armor, not invincible. So that means we can grab him through it. For the characters with worse reversals, this is what you want to do, right? Because they have no real option to fight back against the classic setup. Because, like, Ghostblade can't do it, right? He's things not invincible at the start. Uh, so people, either if you believe they're not going to reverse or just have bad reversals, this is what you want to do because they're just not inclined to do it. Now, this is what makes this setup very strong. It's because even though it looks very simple, there's kind of no real way out. The grab you're seeing is not a grab. That's the trick. It's not a grab. It is an unblockable. That means a lot of the things you would think to get out of it are not going to work. Like, oh, it's a grab. So I'm just going to jump out of it. No, you're not. This is a strike. It's an unblockable. If you are in the air, you will get grabbed. It'll beat most wake-up attacks because either they're not fast enough or they're not fast enough to be able to hit up high enough. Well, okay, screw it. I'm just going to backdash, right? Because I can't get thrown while I'm backdashing. Wrong, idiot. Once again, this is not a grab. This is an unblockable strike. So even if you try to backdash, you will lose. So let's look at this way. If you do nothing, you lose. If you jump, you lose. If you hit a button, most of the time, there's, I'm sure there's a situation I haven't found out yet where the right character can hit the right button and get out of it, but whatever. In all the scenarios I tested buttons lose, right? Backdash loses. So how do I beat this? Well, it's the most roundabout way that just doesn't come naturally. You have to neutral duck. And yeah, that's weird, right? You have to be ducking because that way uh, it can hit uh, standing people, yes, but it can't hit crouching people. Like even short characters like the Enchantress, even if you're standing, this will get you still. The only real way out of this that I can find is to just crouch. So yeah. Now in and of itself, the reward off the safe jump setup is definitely higher, right? Because, well, like, get a combo. If you did full charge grab, and then you did, like, full charge air grab, you're, you're exhausted. Like, only if you are lower health, you still have man left to like, get the combo off. And if you do, that's great. That's to your benefit. But if you don't, well, there you go. But here's uh, one of the more fun things. The jumping grab, if you want to loop stuff, also gives a uh, similar style pressure than uh, compared to the charge heavy grab. So right there, and uh, if we put on our mash reversal, same deal. We'll just wait a split second here. And we still have time to block, right? So that's good. So you can kind of loop it. Now, if you have uh, the wherewithal, and depending on the character, certain characters are hit, easier to hit in this situation than others, you don't even necessarily need mana to follow up on with right away. You can just kind of go for a combo proper. Uh, it's harder on some of the shorter characters. Shorter characters, it's easier just to go right into the stomp and combo up from there. But regardless, that's an option as well. So his ability to control you on your wake up is very good. Once again, from the basic, I'm always at advantage on you on almost everything I do. And I can just run up and threaten strike or grab. That's always good. And in situations like this, he can create safe jump setups. And on certain characters, he can just crush you. Like that's mostly inescapable. <laughs> Once again, the way to beat that is just to neutral duck, which is not a option the brain wants you to do. And obviously enough, neutral duck loses it to the jump in, right? So that can create mind games and pressure and everything from there. It's really good. So now let's talk having a little bit of white health, gray health, whatever you want to call it, but just having a little bit here because it's actually one of your best resources. Yes, it's a good resource for every character. Sure, and everyone can convert. But Grappler, I feel, needs it just a little bit more because everyone else has so much great stuff that they don't need to rely on it. Grappler, if you survive blocking whatever string, and trust me, you'll be blocking a lot, this is your reward. Why? Well, at the bare minimum, unless you do unsafe stuff and make it safe, that's always handy. 
After any given block string and you have a little bit of great health to work with, you're probably pushed back and because your range is so garbo, like it's effectively like a full neutral reset, right? But since, you know, you have stomp, you can kind of skip neutral a little bit. So here's the thing, regular stomp, well, isn't, well, depending on the character, it's mostly safe. Uh, if you get like literal point blank landing and you're in front of the striker, you might have some problems. But for the most part, it's pretty safe, right? But here's the thing, you know, you need your turns. Like that's why we have the charge stomp because it's plus, not negative. But it lets you turn something like the green stomp into your turn. So normally you land green stomp, say you bypass neutral successfully, whatever, you got the hit. But that's about it. And then you get the hit and you run forward, go from there. But if you have the conversion ready, all of a sudden this gets a lot more devastating. Now, in the end of the combo, the damage is still going to scale a fair bit, as you can see. But still, we achieved over 300 damage from landing this. And that's just one example of many possible ones. So normally you'd only get a hundred. So adding an extra 200 damage and ending with the light Frankensteiner, which as we've gone over many times in the video is absolutely to your advantage. Like this just turns this whole scenario around. So once you survive any given block stringer, for whatever reason, you have a little bit of gray health to turn around. Well, then all of a sudden the basic neutral stomp becomes a pretty big deal. You obviously enough, you know, you hit the full combo on hit. And if it's blocked, you're still advantage. You're still plus. You have the advantage of the charge stomp without that charge stomp timing, right? So that's great. It also lets you be really lazy with uh, your charge moves, especially charge uh, launcher, because charge launcher is generally safe if you can make the enemy block it. But the problem is if you whiff, well, you're stuck. A lot of characters can very easily whiff punish this or the shoulder, you know, like. So if you whiff, okay, whoa, time to start blocking, right? And if you hit, then awesome. If you hit, you don't even need no conversion combo. Just rock your full combo, get your health back. If it gets blocked, there's gonna be some pushback. You're mostly safe anyways. So you can still get the health regenerate. But this is basically the, oh, I wasn't even close penalty, right? So uh, especially uh, characters like Swift Master, that kind of stuff. If you whiff any charge move, you're dead against that character. So it's insurance that you can do the move you wanna do, but if you whiff, at the very least, you can return back to neutral, start blocking, and, well, repeat the process all over again. Gray health is an incredibly valuable tool. It enables you to just be a little bit sloppy. As a grappler, you generally have to play a much tighter game than the other characters do, right? They are full of all the crazy OP stuff. You don't really got it as much. And this lets you be a little bit like them, if just for a brief moment, and just enjoy some of the slop. So quick note about his passive. When you're in Awakening, your super move unlocks and you unlock your passive, right? His passive is the single worst one in the game. I feel fairly confident in saying that actually, uh, because what happens is you get much less gray life when you block uh, various specials, right? And then we just had the section on gray life. You need gray life. The thing is, cause it's so much less, by the time you could potentially use it, uh, it'll already recover and then you lose the option. Like, I'd much rather lose more life and keep the option than just to not have it to begin with, right? So, some characters, some characters, I'm mashing my buttons here because I'm trying to infer that the Hitman, right? Some characters, when they get their passive, it's like a game changer. Like, they become an all new character. Grappler, you actually just become a little bit worse, in my opinion, because who cares, honestly, you take a little bit less gray health. You need that gray health to make conversions and do your thing. If you don't have it, you're just less dynamic. So, I don't know, this is more like just a bear or bad news segment, but there it is. Okay, so his passive sucks. That's not the good part of Awakening, but his super, I think is one of the best supers in the game, actually, because any single combo you do, you will always have the ability to end in it because 95% of his combos end in Light Frankensteiner. And every single combo you do, no matter how big or small it is, after Light Frankensteiner, you can always, always get the super. So even at the highest possible end of the damage scaling, it's always going to be a minimum of 200 damage because that's the least it can do. And it just gives you a lot more reach. Given the fact most of your combos will do anywhere from three to 500 damage, add another 200 
that basically means in a lot of ways because you'll spend most of your time getting hit most of your time blocking like let's get real right in a lot of ways grappler is a two-touch character you get your first actual hit and then you just get whittled down to nothing until you get your waking, uh, your awakening rather. And then when you get your second actual hit, you do your combo and then end with the super and that's the match, right? So it gives them a lot of reach, that's good. And also, 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 it's a proper grab. Like you cannot jump out of it after the super flash. Like it is worth doing as a surprise grab in and of, of itself. Because as a raw grab, it does 400 damage. Like even your charge grab does you know, like 280. And yes, you can do more with the full charge version of uh, the skill grab, but that's very slow. That's telegraph. People can react and jump out of it versus like the second you saw, if you saw this and you weren't already airborne, it is already too late. So using it as a base grab and itself is also very valuable on top of being just a good combo ender. And of course the gimmicks, right? If you hold it and you're not near the enemy, it has a bit of a gravitational pull. And they can try to do stuff. They can they can hit you out of it. Depending on where you are when they're airborne, you can actually like make it go over their head, like or rather go over your head uh, with the additional gravitational pull, make it like move swift. Uh, since it has a screen stop, it can like eat inputs. Like I wouldn't recommend using it as an anti-air always, but it has a little value in that. But yeah, it's just incredibly versatile. You can use it raw. Most supers in this game, you cannot use raw. Like just straight up, you'll just die for trying it because they aren't invincible or anything like that. So he's one of the few characters that can use it raw, use it as a proper grab, or always end a combo with it, and almost every single combo can end in it. So very valuable, this is very good. So to end off with a couple of general thoughts, I think the Grappler is an incredibly interesting character. And as far as like being just a Grappler, a character of the Grappler archetype, I think he's one of the most fascinating characters of this archetype in years. And uh, you put him in any other game, given what he can do, and he would be a tyrant. But the problem is he's in DNF Duel, right? DNF Duel is the game where, like, if you fight the Hitman and you bring him down to Awakening and you have full health, it's still an even game, right? And that's not even the craziest thing this game has to offer. So they put a very savage grappler into a game that's even more savage than himself. And in the end, I think, honestly... And if you're watching this later, maybe there's a balance patch. I don't know. But I think, honestly, in the end, he's a lower tier character. But that said, to me, person who likes these kind of characters, I think he's one of the most fun style of this kind of character in a very long time. Yeah, it sucks that you have to block a lot, right? You better get familiar with that guard cancel because you need people to get off you. He's thankfully a fairly low mana use character. He's not like a character where you'll burn through so much mana and combos. Like, unless you do the jumping grab specifically, because that does take up a lot of mana, you almost will never be in a situation where you're just out of mana. Like, there will be the odd time, yes, but for the most part, mana is not an issue, so that's good. And you can just play this character like a grappler. If you've learned how to play a grappler in an Arc System Works game or a Capcom game or whatever, you already have part of the skill set, because part of that skill set is mental. It doesn't matter how good you push buttons and all that kind of stuff. Part of the skill set is just mental. It's about patience and then pressuring the enemy once you're close. And he rewards all of that. So he will lose to the top tiers. Sure, yes. But I think he's a blast. So if you're okay with playing a character that is admittedly a lower tier character, I think this character is one of the funnest characters you can play in this game. Because he doesn't have things as easy, but man, all the stuff so satisfying just... Everything looks like it hurts so much. Everything carries so much weight. Like, the screen keeps shaking all the time. Like, it's just satisfying. You don't get a lot of turns at bat with this character compared to other characters. But when you do get your turn at bat, it is so much more satisfying than a lot of the other characters in this game. So if you are okay with that, I highly recommend this character, despite his tier status. That all said, well, that's the end of the video for now. So that's just some tips and tricks to highlight what the character is capable of. Hopefully your understanding of the character is higher now than it was before you watched this video. And if you could drop a like, that would be greatly appreciated. And otherwise, well, we're at the end of the video. So thank you very much for watching. Hope this video has found you well and go out and play some DNF Duel.